Well, Macaulay Culkin, star of Home Alone, has just turned 40. Wasn't he just 10 a few years ago? Does that make, fact make you feel old? Or maybe you're thinking Macaulay who, and you don't have Steve's taste in film stars. We live in an aging population. Most Western nations are. But the idea of aging is something we try to ignore. We have skin creams to ward off the seven. Yes, seven signs of aging. What's the issue with getting old, Steve? The issue with getting old? Well, I, it, there are some issues and people won't know Macaulay Culkin because of their age, not because of their film taste. Uh, I think the way to face the aging process is not to deny it or else to plunge yourself into sort of uh, hedonism or even lament it, but to age wisely, to uh, get old with wisdom. Problem is that wisdom doesn't always come with age, does it, Dave? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm young and wise, so. talk a little bit about uh, Cobra Kai. Uh, if we're talking about aging actors, the Cobra Kai was a YouTube series that's made it onto Netflix and it's uh, gone to number one with a bullet. And it's a series that follows the lives of the hero and the villain in uh, the Karate Kid movie, the original one, uh, back in the early 80s. And you've got Daniel LaRusso, Karate Kid, and Johnny Lawrence, uh, the guy who, who did the crane kick to the face at the end, the bully. And it's uh, a brilliant premise. What happens to them 34 years later? Now, this, first of all, made me feel old uh, because I was thought 34 years later, uh, uh, Ralph Macchio, who plays Danny LaRusso, is 60 next year. So that makes everyone feel old. But the interesting thing about the series is they didn't just go into the, uh, this is the bully, this is the uh, hero. Uh, they explored how, as their lives went on, as they got older, life became more complex. Uh, the trajectory that they had set for themselves didn't really work out the way that they had intended. And one of the questions that the series asks is, who is the bully? As uh, Danny LaRusso ages, uh, some of the traits in him don't look so attractive. And then we start to feel a little bit sorry for Johnny Lawrence, the uh, villain of the first movie, uh, how he's dealing with life, the things that went on in his life. And so much of the series, and there's three series to this, um, is about a desire to return to the past somehow in our lives and resolve the things that we got wrong when we were younger. But the big question is, can we actually do that? And we're gonna cross and have a little bit of a look at uh, one of the trailers to the series. Cobra Kai is back where it belongs. Back on top. But the real story's only just begun. Thought you were dead. <laughs> Cobra Kai never dies. Ever since the tournament, all I've been thinking about are ways to destroy Cobra Kai. That opening our dojo? Make sure you can balance that? Balance is my thing. We got some new recruits. Cobras, show them what real karate looks like. It's just an insane karate cult that's brainwashing half the school. That's why I'm opening up the already done. We got room for one more? Someday the fight will come to you. And I want to make sure you're ready. Bless you. It's time to see what Miyagi-Do is made of. Something tells me there's a can of wax in my future. So, Steve... <laughs> Have you been watching Cobra Kai and does it make you feel old? Have I pronounced it correctly, Cobra Kai? I'm, I'm just not au fait with these modern things. Well, Cobra Kai is actually the name of the dojo or the karate school uh, that Johnny Lawrence was part of where he learned his villainous ways at the hand of someone who was quite abusive toward him. Uh, so he sets it up again. Uh, watching the series, Cobra Kai, because he sets it up to revisit the past, it certainly does make me feel old. I remember 1984, Karate Kid, and Mr. Miyagi, the original Mr. Miyagi, is uh, in the original movie, uh, was actually younger than both the actors uh, play the playing the roles now. 
So he looked ancient then, but those two guys, they've aged well. So modern skin products have helped them in. But it does make me feel old. That passage of time seems to have been compressed in a Macaulay Culkin kind of way. What about you, Dave? Did you watch any of the classics and then think the actors themselves have uh, aged and I haven't? Um, not really. I was born old. And, you know, I, I, I remember even when listening to The Who, which is more me, um, hope I die before I get old. And I was thinking, well, I am old. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very anti-Western in this because I think it's a great thing to get old. Okay. Um, but why, why do we look back so much as we get old? Or for those who do, I mean, some people don't, but I think most people do. Well, I, well, I think we live in a culture that venerates youth and doesn't deal very well with older people. Although it's interesting that in the United States at the moment, uh, two very old people are running for president. Uh, but uh, someone else observed to me that many people in academia in the US are much older in their positions than people in the UK or Australia. So they venerate age a little more than we do. But we look back because we have regrets, because we think we could have done things differently, or we put a nostalgic sheen on the past as if somehow our past was, was better uh, than it actually probably was. That's, that's what I think. Um, I remember the Who line as well, I hope I die before I get old. And now all those guys are old and deaf and they, uh, you know, making sure they're eating well and uh, not drinking too much in order to get really, really old. So. Uh, we fear the aging process, but we don't know what to do when we get there because it's just going to string out for a long time. If we, that's our best hope, it would seem. Yeah. I mean, it seems that the, the way we are is the way we become unless there's some sort of circuit breaker. In other words, it's kind of like almost inevitable. It's in the genes and so on. I mean, do you agree with that? Well, I'm watching Cobra Kai. What happens is uh, they do return to the source of where they began in Karate Kid. They can't get away from their past as easily as they thought they could because as they've aged, uh, they've become entrenched. They've become entrenched in the way they are. Now, my dad died in an aged care facility and it was full of very grumpy people mm -hmm. because they had a lot of practice. They'd been grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> and they hadn't broken that circuit. And I noticed that uh, the way we are when we're young, it can form a rut in our lives. And I think Cobra Kai uh, taps into that a little bit, uh, that that's what we do. Yeah, I, I mean, I think with that as well, I would say that sometimes there are things that change. I mean, people can change and do change. I don't think we just go, oh, that's the way that we are. But I suspect that that's why our culture fears aging for lots of different things. But they, they you know, maybe, what well, do you think that? Do you think our culture fears aging? Because I, I, I think a lot of it does anyway. Yeah, well, aging uh, tells you something else, that the next stage isn't aging more. It's death. And so our culture probably fears death and aging looks like death in a slow process. Interestingly, I watch a lot of reaction videos when I'm not working very hard of young musicians or young people listening to older musicians. And one of the key songs that many young people listen to and reflect on afterwards is the uh, Johnny Cash version of Nine Inch Nails song, Heard. And inevitably after that song, they talk about, I don't want to die with lots of hurt and regret. I want to change things now. It's almost like a, a warning shot across the bows that if I don't change something, if something doesn't break a circuit, I could end up hurting the people I love and hurting myself, but letting you down again, because it's hard to break the circuit. I think that's part of the issue with aging that we become more like ourselves. We become caricatures of ourselves at some stage. I think. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, as you get older, sometimes you see you, you, your parents reflected in yourself and you thought you were just going to be so different. Um, but maybe that's <laughs> yeah. not the case. You know, I'm thinking as well about how we, we treat older people. And maybe, maybe this is my last question for you and you can give us some scripture as well. But yeah. how, how should we treat older people? I mean, I, I see that we've got two geriatrics standing to be president of the United States. To be honest, I'm not bothered about their age. I'm bothered about them for lots and lots of different reasons. Yeah. But I do think how we treat older people. I wrote an article for the Australian Presbyterian on, on, on this disdain that we seem to have towards older people. And I, I think it's so wrong because I think it's so unbiblical. And so as an older person, how would you like me to treat you? What's that? Speak up, Sonny. No. Uh, <laughs> As an older person, yes, <laughs> who's not as wise as me, um, young no. person that I am. How would you? How would you like to be treated as an older person? Well, I think with dignity, 
and respect. And I think the COVID crisis has at least made us think about that a little more. Uh, my father, as I said, when he was in an aged care facility, which is interesting that Western nations don't value age as much as African nations and aged care facilities are primarily staffed by people from uh, non-Western countries doing the, the caring. And my younger brother pointed out, uh, it, what a good thing that the cultures that value aging end up looking after aging people. And they did so, especially with my dad, with great dignity and respect. And I think the Bible tells us to look after older people and to honour them and to uh, realise that age and wisdom do go hand in hand often as well. It's not like every old person doesn't know what they're on about. But one thing that in the scriptures that I thought was interesting is in the book of Ecclesiastes, the wisdom literature of the Bible, where you get this uh, in Ecclesiastes 12, right at the end of this book, which talks about the pursuit of everything in life. And it's sort of very misty and you're trying to grab onto all your opportunities and losing them. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. And then it jumps straight to a description of what it's like to be old. And you think, what happened to the bit in the middle? Being, <laughs> And then you look back and you go, ah, I used it up very quickly, chasing all the things in the other chapters of Ecclesiastes, the pursuit of power or wealth or pleasure or good times or whatever. Those things happen very quickly. And if you don't remember your creator in your youth, you're going to spend a lot of busy time being distracted from that in the years up to about 60. And suddenly you're spat out at the other end if you're not careful, unthinkingly. And you go, what did I do with all that? That's not a wise way to grow old. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? That, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, look, next week, we are going to uh, ask the question, um, could we do with some more extremists in society? I don't think we've got enough extremism. So we're going we're gonna to look at extremists, um, uh, and you, you'll see where that comes. But again, thank you, Steve. I mean, I think it's, this is a hugely important subject, and thank you for raising it. Thank you, old man. See you next week. See you.